Retail development is one of your focuses for the city. What do you think retail does for a city? Well, you know, one of the specific objectives, I think, of this administration that's so very important has to do with fiscal stability. You know, we're really at a disadvantage with so little of our, uh, uh, of our land that's taxable, you know, something like 40%. Even other capitals, you know, s state capitals have at least 60% of their land that they are able to generate tax revenue from. So, you know, all the other sources of revenue for us are very important. So retail is one of those, those areas where, um, you know, we leak a lot of s retail sales to other jurisdictions. We simply have historically not had the shopping variety and the formats that have uh, that are you know very much favored by our own residents so they leave the district to shop in other locations so what we're trying to do is to stop that from happening in part by bringing new types of retail into the district by bringing retail convenience to more and more neighborhoods. In the last five years, 10 new grocery stores have opened in the District of Columbia, and still we have what some uh, researchers would call food deserts in parts of the city where there just isn't great access to fresh and healthy food. So we think there's a great opportunity to Im improve the, the retail picture, and we're under-retailed. We have something like under nine uh, retail square feet per capita compared to something like 26 square feet per capita in the region and something like 23 na uh, nationwide. So we're really under-retailed. Speaking of retail, you knew Walmart was going to come up. We got this email from Guy in D.C. First, why aren't communities taken into account first in development? Shouldn't developers start by getting sign-off from the neighborhood and the ANC before submitting to the zoning and office of planning? Also, why are we not limiting big box stores like Walmart to areas that want it east of the river, rather than forcing it on areas that don't want it, like wards 4 and 5? Can you require big box stores to meet standards for unionization, health care, and require they don't sell guns? I think I've asked about, well, Guy has asked about five or six questions in one. I'll ask one at a time. Getting a sign-on from the neighborhood in the ARC, ANC before submitting to the Zoning and Office of Planning. I think that's a really important thing to do, and I think any smart developer actually does that. And so uh, it is true that uh, while well, Walmart has been in town, having a lot of meetings, talking to a lot of a lot of different groups. We've actually gotten no s official submittals from them except for one. Um, so of the four stores they're considering, they haven't sent anything in. Now, admittedly, one of the stores that they have come in to see us about doesn't require our sign-off. That's a buy right uh, store in Ward 6 on New Jersey Avenue. But so they have already been meeting with groups around the city. Absolutely. Also, why are we not limiting big box stores to areas that want it rather than forcing it on areas that don't want it like Ward 4 and 5? Well, um, that's, a, that's also a good question in terms of forcing it on places. I mean, basically, I wish I could say that we dictate exactly what and where things uh, get located. We zone, and if it's a permissible use by the zoning, uh, it really depends on whether there's a market for it. I mean, Walmart, you can only get this kind of information specifically from a retailer, but they say that uh, in the last year, $42 million of s in sales have been racked up by D.C. residents at their suburban locations. You know, when you go into a store, they sometimes ask you what your zip code is. And for those that have given zip codes, you know, $42 million in sales. So the, it's not like there are, that Washingtonians don't want to shop there. They already shop there. And can you require big box stores to meet standards for unionization, health care? I think the mayor has been really clear on this, that uh, he has uh, high expectations for a company like Walmart, the world's largest retailer, if they want to be welcomed into the District of Columbia. And that includes paying a living wage um, and benefits. It includes career ladder opportunities for people who do get employed there. Uh, it includes workforce development opportunities and, and local district hiring. So I think all of those things are, are very important and that, you know, Walmart has said they want to be welcomed here and, and that's what it's going to take. And finally, from Guy in D.C., can you require that they don't sell guns? I can answer that. No, they cannot require that they don't sell guns because there's a handgun law that was passed and that would allow the sale of handguns in the District of Columbia. Well, again, they they want to be welcome, and and uh, I think that that's another thing that's that's on the table with them. You know, they can choose to sell or not sell different things in different communities, and you know, 
you know, I think this is a community that wouldn't welcome gun sales. Indeed, there's a coalition that is opposing Walmart. It's not actually trying to keep Walmart out. That coalition wants an agreement that Walmart will invest in the local community and treat workers well and presumably maybe not sell handguns. Do you support those demands? I do, and I support them not just for Walmart, but for everybody who's going to be here. I think those are absolutely uh, very laudatory objectives that we should that we should seek for any employer. Walmart says it will consider smaller format stores that fit the neighborhoods. Is that unusual for Walmart, or is that something Walmart has done in other places? Well, um, it's a funny thing. It's not something that they had done 10 years ago or even five years ago, but more and more retailers are recognizing that uh, urban markets have been long neglected and that they the, and that stores that are really successful don't just import their suburban format and land it on some site in the in you know in an urban area so they have spent the last 18 months or so developing some more urban prototypes and even the stores that are being considered for the district look you know very different depending on where they are um, I know they are also considering a very small uh, stores, maybe a 30,000 square foot mostly grocery store, and that's not a format that they've yet proposed for a location in the district, but you know, I think that's, that's also potentially something that we'll see in the future. Target is one of those big box stores that, that reconfigured in order to be urban, and this store has been very, very successful. So there's, I think, growing interest in other types of retail who've never been in urban locations to really give us a look.